I'm here at Patsall Park, which is very near Wolverhampton. It's way out of my comfort zone. I tend to only fish uh, within a very small radius from my house. Why? Because it's just something I've always done. You know, I've got reservoirs and the Somerset levels and everything like that. And, uh, you know, the fishing is, is endless, really. Um, and But you can sometimes just get in that same rut where you're just fishing the same venues, doing the same things. And um, it's nice to go on a bit of an adventure. So um, when uh, when Sam said, you fancy coming up and fishing a water by my house? I thought, well, why not? It's a, it's a bit of a trek, but why not? Um, it's a bit of an adventure. I think it's quite a prolific venue. Um, I think the match fishing can be really good on here from what I what I looked on on Google um, and they run pike competitions I went on their Facebook page had a little bit back through there because I needed to do a little bit of homework because I can't really just turn up to a place and then just chuck out my rods and hope for the best because I'm not really like that as a person I, I, I want to kind of delve and see what I can find out so um, I a little scan round on Google and I found a contour map that is absolutely gold dust so um, I had a look at that I could see where the shallows were where the deeps were I kind of knew before I got here where the bait fish would be because you knew this time of year you know it was minus six they were definitely going to be in the deep water um, and uh, and then I had a look around and saw the pike competition so you're looking seeing what the pike are like where they're catching them from what sort of weights they are you can see the backdrop so you can see what sort of areas of the lakes they are um, and you can do things like that to try and give you um, it's quite exciting as well because it builds up a bit of a jigsaw about um, uh, the venue you're going to you know our first plan of attack was yesterday to um, kind of use some lures really we could have done two days on dead baits which in the conditions you know but I've never fished here before so just to get on a boat which you can you can hire here and then and then and you know come out with a friend make a bit of a journey and, and, and a bit of a trip and get on a boat do a day's boat fishing um, you you know I went around everywhere yesterday looking for all the little gullies and bars and and, and getting a real nice feel for the venue First fish, just skipping a pro shad across the bottom and uh, found a load of bait fish, probably about typical as any lake really in the winter when it's cold, it's minus five when we got it this morning. Ooh, steady girl. Ooh. Yeah. Um, all the bait fish are in one area, so found the, found the bait fish and rather than fishing right in the thick of it, coming off the back of it because that's where you tend to find a lot of the fish they go in they feed they come back they go in they feed and come back so you can try and get them off the back of it so anyway it's a little jack to start the day but that is a very welcome little fish there we go there's the pro shad beautiful that in the game is called a blank saver which is always very welcome because the aim of the game is to try not to blank because when we go fishing we like to catch fish so if we get a blank saver mission accomplished there she is it's probably going to feel like a block of ice there we go beautiful matching the hatch with that little pro shad there it's probably very similar to what they're feeding on in the bait fish this time of year. They'll all be bunched up, all the roach will possibly bleak and whatever. So, uh, yeah, first blood as they say. Leeches on the fins, leeches on every fin. So uh, they are lead on the bottom, you can see the plenty of leeches on that one. It's always a good indication that, you know, they don't tend to pick up leeches when they're, um, when they're swimming around mid-water or anything like that. It's usually when they've just been led up and those leeches are in the silt. Personally, I always just uh, remove them. Gives them a helping hand, so. There's that one. Here we go then. Put the little one back. It's always worth looking down their mouth just to see if there's uh, anything they've been eating. There she is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, there she goes. Perfect. Now, hopefully, that's the first of many, so. I'm not going to change anything now because I had a f I changed a few lures until I got to that point. So now I'm not going to change anything for at least half an hour or so doing exactly the same to see if, was it a fluke? Because everyone can get lucky <laughs> sooner or later. You chuck enough darts at the dartboard, sooner or later you hit the bull. But if I get another fish, then that's probably not lucky. There's probably something in it. So then I can look at that and then see if there's anything else I need to change 
if I get any signs or signals to change it. So let's see what happens. Doesn't feel huge, but it's a pike. <laughs> well, we gave the bottom end a real good go. There's loads of bait fish down there. You could see them everywhere, but there was no evidence of pike striking or anything like that. I don't doubt they're down there, but because a large proportion of the bait fish are down there, they're probably very well fed. There's probably very small windows uh, when they actually feed because it's just a larder in front of them. And me just racing lures past and crawling lures along the bottom. Quite gruelling what we've got here, uh, little Jack. Um, and because I've never fished here before, I just wanted to have a bit of an explore really. So we've come a little bit further up the lake. That is a little Jack. <laughs> and um, caught this one out in the middle of no man's land. Oh, don't fall off, don't fall off. Eyes are bigger than its belly. <clears throat> On a little pro shad. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Let's take that out there. There we go. That's the lure which did it. Only a 10 gram jig head on that lurk, so it gets a really nice slow drop and I can work it really slowly across the bottom as well. And there we go. A little jack. The light's fading. We spent a couple of hours having a look around seen bait fish all over this area here, all down this area there. Had a pike here, lost a pike here, went up further, had another fish. But ultimately, this is the area, this is the deepest part of the lake down here. It's about 18, 19 foot deep. There's a few contours and gullies and things. Um, it's been, there's not a ripple on the water. It's minus six last night and um, it's bright blue skies. It's not not the one for lure fishing um, but it is what it is you, you know when you book yourself in you book yourself in and we go fishing and we try and catch some fish but um tomorrow the weather changes it's not as cold tonight it's minus one so it's not hot but it's not as cold um and it's got a bit of wind behind it as well it's got about 25 mile an hour gusting winds 10 flat so i reckon it could be all right um I don't think it'd be all right for lure fishing. I still think it's not quite right. It needs to be a bit more settled because it was a sudden cold spell. But I think um, I think we can get some dead baits out and put a bit of scent around them. Um, then I think there's a good chance of a, of a fish or two tomorrow. So, um, you know, today was a bit of a, a reconnaissance and uh, the information I found has given me an idea of where I want to go, um, where I can hit some different depths, different contours and um, hopefully, hopefully, target one or two better fish tomorrow so fingers crossed So we're back on uh, 
back on the same venue as yesterday. Yesterday uh, we did a lot of scouting around everywhere and it seemed like about 90% of the bait fish are all in this big area here. So it made sense to come in and try and um, put the dead bait rods out because there was a few jacks around just there. We had a few followed off jacks. We caught a few jacks and everything. So um, what we're looking for today is probably only one, maybe two bites. See my little Robin, my little Robin friend there? He's my lucky mascot. We've got the rods out there. I've chosen this swim here because out in front of me there's some contours. So branching to my right hand side, it goes down to about kind of 17, 80 foot, but up, 18 foot, but up on my left, I can get maybe about 12. So there's a bit of a slope there. So um, rather than just going chucking them out any old way, I, I looked around yesterday to try and find somewhere which I thought would be promising for today. And um, that's what I've done. I've just put two dead baits, one at, the, one at the top of the slope and one, one at the base of the slope. Uh, the only issue in my mind is that it is an all-you-can-eat buffet out there. It is literally stacked out with bait fish. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing. But I think slowly those big girls, rather than chasing after all that bait fish, they should slowly move in on that scent. I've put chopped fish around them as well. So what I do is I have the spawn ready. So it's already loaded. So I don't mess anything or miss anything. And I put the dead bait rod, sink the braid, put it in the rest, make sure it's safe. Grab the, while I can still see the rings coming off where I've cast in, just behind where I've cast in. Um, and, and I put it there. So there's chop fish behind, so they're not coming down, picking up loads of chop fish over my lines. They're picking it up from behind my, uh, behind my bait. And then I've just got my bait there, which is gently wafting, which is a much bigger mouthful. Um, that's the plan. There's no point in moving the baits. There's plenty of other anglers around today and I've not seen anyone have a fish. So there's no point in me moving those rigs because I've already put chop fish out there and things like that. So it literally is just a waiting game now for hopefully a better fish of a better size. Fingers crossed. Hello little Robin. So you may not associate this with, um, with pike fishing, but I literally just always have a spawn in my bag. Um, they don't take up a lot of space and they can be really handy because if I'm using a bait boat, I quite often put bits of chop fish in there or um, sometimes halibut pellets soaked in, um, in the, the amino spray or, or anything like that really, because um, I mean, it's quite coloured water in here. So there definitely, you know, might be a bit of sight feeding, but a lot of it is done on scent. So the more scent you can put out there, the more likely it is they're going to be homing in onto where you're actually fishing. And um, yeah, what I do is I just have to spawn ready. The reason I have, it, I have it ready is because I want to try and be as accurate as I can with it. So I have it ready. I have the chop fish in it. I lie it on the floor nice and carefully so it won't open up on the floor. Um, and then once I've cast the bait out, grab the spawn, like set the rod, grab the spawn. While I can still see the rings coming off it, I just fire out a spawn and I just tuck it behind the back of where I've cast in. And it just literally flutters down there and you've got some chop fish. Just adds a little bit of extra scent to the swim. Um, I use a lure rod because I've always got a lure rod with me. Um, you could use a spawn rod, you could use a cart rod. But um, yeah, and this one here, you know, I've got a bait force, 30 to 80 gram, 240 centimetre. You know, it's a rod I use a lot for chucking replicants around. And um, it's a good rod and it easily coats with this, uh, I think that's maybe the medium sized spawn. A little float on the top there, that's just a predator. <laughs> Uh, one of the predator pop-ups, I pushed that on there and then if it ever, anything ever happened, you had a snap off, then it's always going to float and you're always going to get it back in. Yeah, that's fish. Okay, fish on. a bit better. Okay, so this one feels a bit better. When you're playing pike, once you get really close, always slacken that drag off a little bit. If the water's really cold, quite often they don't go with a big powerful run until you get them close, then you can get a hook pull.
feels a better fish. Not a monster, but it looks a pretty one. Oh, lovely. Oh, what a lovely fish. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Had the plan, mate. Yeah, had the plan and it worked out. And it's bite time, obviously. Yeah, it had unusual marking on it. Yeah, it's a good double, good solid double, yeah. Unclip this. Deal with that in a minute. There we go. There we go. There we go, beautiful, old English estate lake. Better fish, off the back end of the bait fish shore. Proof is in the pudding, lovely. had a nice fish and actually there was a little feeding flurry so you've always got to kind of look around and make sure you're aware of what's going on with other anglers and dead opposite us um, I seen somebody have a little jack and I thought oh, okay you know it's a fish maybe there'll be a little feeding window and um, probably about half an hour 40 minutes before that as there was nothing going on Sam said oh, I'm have a float rod and stick it in the shallower water where a lot of a lot of the bait fish are so um, yeah that's what we did we put Sam's rod out through there Sam was fiddling with his camera and not watching and the float slid away so I went over and I played it and uh, and uh, whilst I was watching and um, I played it and got hey give me a bad name. sorry mate and um, yeah and uh, there was a jack on there and um, yeah anyway put that one in the net and um, uh, I was just about to get let that one go and then my one clipped out so it's just that little teeny feeding window um, which is is what happens at this time of year sometimes it can be first light sometimes last light and also bizarrely basically cover the whole day it can sometimes be in the middle of the day just because in the middle of the day in the winter it can be the hottest time but there's so many variations with cloud cover and light levels and everything like that but yeah kind of um yeah it was great uh, it was good to get a better fish it just goes to show that where sam is which is just over there is on the shallower plateau and that's where he picked up the smaller fish and you know from yesterday's homework and knowing that that deeper water and off the back of the shelf and being further away from the bait fish can pick up the bigger fish just as proof in the pudding that you know it was more than twice as big as the one which which went on the shallow water so yeah happy days we've still got a bit of time left the rods are out there put a little bit of chop over the top of them and um yeah who knows who knows might pick up another fish a better fish or if not it's been a good session so we'll see So I get asked lots of questions online, people message me and things, which is fine. I always answer the messages as best as I can. And uh, one of the things they ask me for is my lead system. So um, when I'm ledgering, quite often people, s I'll, I'll say that I use a drop-off system. And um, I know in carp fishing, obviously, it's, you know, you've got your lead clip systems, which you've got the tail rubber which holds the lead on and uh, and obviously that's a, a semi-fixed uh, system it's not like that it's a bit different um, because and then I don't want to be dropping the lead all the time so I'm only using it where it's weedy conditions or um, maybe you know there may be potentially be some snags on a river or something like that which I can't see and I don't want to risk the lead getting in there so so what I use is um, it is out of the we sell them Fox International uh, the carp side sell them and um, so I've got my run ring, I've got a leader here, I've got my run ring, there, so that's just a normal run ring, that's what it looks like, okay, and it comes up to the buffer bead, when you buy the kit, you get the run ring, and you get the buffer bead, okay, and then what you need to buy, which is part of the kit, is the PVA strips, PVA nuggets, I think they're called, okay, so, You'd get a run as normal, the pipe would run all the way through and off it would go. You've got two options with these run rings. 
what comes with it is a solid peg. If I push that into that hole there, simple like that, there's absolutely no way that lead's coming off. Still safe because it's running and if you ever got a, a, a break off it's gonna just run off just like it normally would and, and, and just the same as normal pike fishing. So if I'm fishing it's absolutely clear, there's no need for, there's no snags, there's no nothing, maybe in a carp commercial or, or something like that which has got pike in it then I would just put a peg in it because there's no reason, no reason to put a nugget. If like I said it, you know you've got those snags around or you're fishing in a river or anything like that at all then what you do is you get the PVA nugget, strip even, and you just literally, where the peg went, you put it through, and you pull it down, pull it all the way down, du, 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 right into the last one, get your cussers, and you literally just trim it at the back, cut it off, right? And then, the nugget is through there, it's not coming off, no, I can pull that and it's not going anywhere at all, okay? It's absolutely solid until I pull that hard, right? So I don't cast with them with heavy leads or anything like that. Um, if I was in the river, underarm swings, everything like that, I'm absolutely fine. Um, but what they do is because they're PVA, once they're out in the water, they um, they don't dissolve straight away. They just get a lot looser. Um, and after a few hours, then yeah, they, they would have uh, they would go down a fair old bit. And then because what happens is once they've gone the leads naturally fit in this little sleeve, really quite firm anyway. So it's, even even if there's no nugget in it, it's still, there you go, okay? So what happens is if I'm fishing in the river or, or, or anywhere where I'm actually using a PVA nugget, unless I get the fish, I can reel it in every single time in anyway. So the only way I'm dropping the lead is if I've got a fish, and that's for the fish welfare. It's the only reason I do it, because basically a lead can pull that fish down in the fight, or it could potentially get snagged up or stuck behind something on the way in, so it's just solely for fish welfare. I don't use loads of leads doing it or anything like that. I just use it when it, when it's the right occasion. If it's, if it's somewhere I'm not sure about where I'm fishing, if there's a chance, you know, there could be falling down trees or something like that, then for the safety of the pike, I literally just put a nugget in, just to make sure that if I do get one, and the last thing I'm going to do is potentially tether up a fish or anything like that because the lead can just literally pop free and then away you go it just lifts that fish up in the water so that's uh, that's what I do how I do it and it's definitely definitely helped me with fish you know when they used to go into weed beds and things like that I've got no problem at all because they just drops the lead whoosh, they come straight up in the surface and away you go it's a great bit of a uh, fish welfare kit So, as you can probably see, I don't know if you can with a camera actually, because sometimes it sucks in all the light, but the light is fading quite a lot here now, um, which means you can't carry on filming in the next five, 10 minutes. So potentially right on dusk, you know, there potentially could be a, a, another bite maybe. However, the temperature's dropping. <sighs> if you can see that <laughs> but the temperature's dropping loads so um yeah it's time for us to kind of wrap up and get out of here now uh it's been good we've come down we've had some fun in a boat it's always fun going out in the boat and, and having a look around a new venue and getting a feel for it and that was um the plan to try and have a look around see if we could find any fish found the bait fish and um and then hung back off them and caught um, a decent sized pike as well um, and another backup fish in that little small teeny feeding window so it was good overall came um, looked at what we wanted to do, caught what we wanted to catch, and um, it's been good. It's been a good, uh, good couple of days. Had a bit of snow, nearly had a snow pike, um, which was which was good. Um, yeah, and I think it's time to reel the rods in, call it a day, and do the long drive back to sunny old Somerset.